Welcome to my talk about Neural Diff, segmenting 3D objects that move in egocentric videos. I'm Vadim, and this is a joint work with Diane Lalus and Andrea Vidaldi. We are proposing a novel method for the task of discovering and visualizing 3D objects from egocentric videos. An example of such a video is shown here. This is a short clip from the applications dataset. Given this kind of raw data, we would like to discover and visualize all objects that were moved during the entire video. An example output can be seen on the right. We use neural rendering for learning a separable 3D representation of the scene. Then we remove the background, fix the viewpoint and visualize all objects that have been moved during the video. This kind of representation enables us to reason about the objects in a way that is consistent with geometry. And it could also be helpful for the more complex task of reconstructing each single object in 3D as well. Before we go into details of our method, let us see how similar methods relate to our defined task. First, we note that traditional approaches for segmenting objects in videos are designed for a different kind of input. For example, on the left side we see a typical video for the task of background subtraction. The camera is fixed, the lighting conditions are mostly consistent and we see people walking along the street. Other examples show cars or other objects including the background. In the middle, we see a clip for the task of motion segmentation. In this setting, we are usually interested in cementing one object from the background and the camera is either fixed or follows the object in a steady way. In comparison to that, our dataset contains clips with an average duration of 14 minutes. The camera is attached to the actor who is manipulating many small objects and occludes the scene. This makes our task significantly harder. Now, what are the challenges of our dataset? As we have seen before in the video, the person is moving constantly over the whole kitchen. Additionally, the actor is also occluding the scene in most of the frames, which makes it difficult to track moving objects. Finally, the videos also contain many objects that rarely move over the video. For example, in this case we see a frame at the first minute of the video. After another minute we see objects that have appeared since then. And after 7 minutes some of these objects still were not moved. In order to handle this complex setting, we want to make use of a 3D representation of the scene. One way to do that is to model it with neural rendering and neural radiance fields in particular. The task here consists in learning a 3D representation of a scene from images that enables us to render novel views. In the first step, an SFM pipeline is applied to estimate the camera poses of each viewer image, for example call map. Then we express images themselves in terms of the volume rendering setting, where we shoot rays from the cameras of these images and render pixel colors from the densities and colors of the volume. Let us look in more detail how it looks like in this image. We have selected a camera and sampled the positions of a ray that comes out of it with a specific viewing direction. In order to render a color along this ray, we also require densities and colors per ray segment. We model these with an MLP that takes as input a position and viewing direction and predicts the corresponding color and density. Now we can apply volume rendering to render a color C hat, which should correspond to the actual color of the ground truth pixel color of the ray. For that, we have to adjust the colors and densities of the MLP. We do this by minimizing the mean squared error between the rendered color and the ground truth color for each ray. This will result in a change of colors and densities produced by the MLP and in turn the rendered pixel colors will become more similar to the pixel colors of the input images. In order to combine neural rendering with egocentric videos, we propose three specialized neural rendering volumes. The first is supposed to model the background and is the basic version of NERF that we have seen on the previous slide. It captures things that stay static during the video, such as the table. We define another MLP that focuses on objects that move during the video. For example, a cutting board that was moved on top of the table, or the knife that is used by the actor. Additionally, we also model the body of the actor itself with a third volume to capture the actor's hands and legs. Note that the inputs and outputs of these models change slightly to the basic NERF version. We will look into the differences in the following slides. First, we take time. 
represented by T as an input for the foreground and actor model. This enables both models to render views not only depending on the spatial location but also the temporal dimension. This is important for both models as they are supposed to capture anything that changes over the whole video. We separate the learning of colors and densities that correspond to dynamic parts by modeling them with an uncertainty score beta. This score is rendered analogously to the color and enables both models to capture anything that cannot be expressed by the static model. We further encourage the separation of dynamic parts into the foreground and actor by making use of an inductive bias. We know that the objects are anchored to the world coordinate system, but the body of the actor is attached to the head and therefore moves with the camera. To capture this different kind of motion, we express the positions of the ray in terms of the camera coordinate system. This is crucial for separating these two kinds of motion. Here we see how the combined model looks like from an implementation point of view. We model each volume with MLPs, where the background and foreground model also share some initial layers. We have three inputs, viewing direction, position and time. The foreground and actor model also produce uncertainty scores to model the dynamic parts. Additionally, we also include further tricks such as smooth dynamics for the time and propose a principled color mixing. These and further features are explained in the paper. To sum up the overall architecture, our background model is based on NERF and does not capture time. The foreground model is more related to NERF W and is time variant. The actor model is also time variant, but is expressed in the camera space in comparison to the other two models. Let us look now at a summary video that shows how our method solves the task. Given viewpoints from a video, NeuralDiff reconstructs the full video sequence by combining its three model components corresponding to background, foreground, and actor. Additionally, our proposed method can also reconstruct the scene from a fixed viewpoint over the complete video. We also compare our model with NERF and NERF W in terms of the rendering to assess the quality of the visualization of both motion types. Here we see that NERF is not able to capture the plate correctly and produces three overlaid plates instead. Additionally, the pasta colander and actor are barely visible. NERF W produces sharper results in general, but still shows multiple plates. If we apply our method without the actor model, we see that the actor is captured badly. With the actor model, we get slightly sharper results and capture also the hands more reliably. Now we also compare our method to NERF W in terms of the segmentation performance. Here we see test views with ground truth annotations overlaid in red color. We note that NERF W fails to capture the plate and the actor completely. It also captures finer details, such as the schizos, or the package less reliably. If we employ our method without the actor, we notice that the entire lower body is missing, whereas the hands are segmented with low confidence. If we include the actor model, we see the full body is captured correctly with high confidence, and furthermore, the model also captures the middle part of the colander, which is omitted by the other models. To conclude, we have proposed a method that combines neural rendering with egocentric videos. We have seen that the method allows us to remove the background, fix the viewpoint and visualize the objects that have been moved over the duration of the video. The learned representation makes it easier to reason about 3D objects in the video and enables us to segment them reliably. Furthermore, we have shown that neural rendering can also be used for discovering semantics beside the task of novel view synthesis. Finally, the segmentation of objects in 3D space could also be helpful for the more complex task of reconstructing signal objects in 3D as well. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thank you for listening.